Hello and welcome to another low tech video. Today I'm going to wrap up the timber frame chicken coop in part two. So in the last video we saw how I built the frame out of uh, spruce that was taken down on the property. And here we see the rafters going on. Unfortunately I built myself onto the rafters with no way to get down. I had to jump. The rafters are going to be covered by reclaimed wooden uh, cedar shingles. These had come off our house when we re-shingled it. And they're still good, a lot of them are still good to reuse on top of the coop. And you can see here, as they get overlapped uh, in successive layers to keep the water out, the water just runs right off. Even though they're old, I gave them a little extra uh, overlap, so there's plenty of wood uh, between the elements and the chickens. We put on temporary walls uh, and a front while it was snowing last spring. Unfortunately, a raccoon was able to rip through the poster board and get in uh, and attack our chickens. Luckily, none of them died. Here you can see us lifting up the house to put the foundation on. Usually you put the foundation first, but it was below zero, so we weren't able to do that. Then I filled in all the cavities between the timbers with wattle. Wattle is basically upright poles with wooden sticks woven between them. This is an old type of wall uh, that was used in timber framing for thousands of years. And now I'm making what's called daub, which makes up the wattle and daub wall. The daub is made up of four parts clay, one part sand, a quarter part hydrated lime putty, which I'll get into in a minute, one part straw, and then about one part water, but really what I needed to make it a nice, thick, sticky paste. Next came the fun part of applying the daub, and really it was just a matter of pushing it into the nooks and crannies created by the wattle, which is what it's for. Wattle is the precursor of lathe in plaster. It leaves horizontal niches for the back or the keys of the daub or the plaster to get worked into, and then it holds it when it sets up. So I put this daub on, and then I let it sit for about two weeks, and I covered it with plastic wrap, and then every couple of days I would wet it down lightly. It looked kind of cool and made me think about what buildings might have looked like um, covered in, in mud before plaster and other coverings would have come about. Next came the plaster, and the plaster relies on hydrated lime, and because I didn't have hydrated lime sitting in a pit that's been there for 20 years like the old uh, plaster workers used to, uh, I bought hydrated lime uh, type S at the hardware store, and then I mixed that 50 pound bag with about two gallons, enough to make it feel about as thick as toothpaste. Then I put it in a bucket and covered it with water, and that water keeps oxygen out of it. And uh, over time, all of the uh, granules of hydrated lime soak up water and become a different chemical. There's a discussion of it on the website. Uh, you can go to the blog and search for timber frame and you can find where I talk about the chemistry where it goes from limestone to quicklime uh, back to limestone when it's exposed to air. That lime putty then got mixed with sand and horsehair to make the first layer of plaster. And it was one part lime, three or four parts sand, and then one part manila rope cut up into two inch lengths and separated out to simulate horse hair because horse hair is coarser than human hair. I got that idea from Mr. Chickadee who also has a YouTube channel. You should check him out. He has a lot of really great videos. And I just mixed this until it became a nice thick consistency and would stick upside down on the trowel uh, when put on there. And then it was simply a matter of spreading the plaster over the daub once the daub had dried. Um, I did wet the daub a little bit, otherwise uh, the dry daub will suck too much moisture out and dry the plaster too quickly. Uh, so I did damp it down um, and then spread it out. Uh, about a half an inch thick was my goal, but some places on the daub were uh, more concave and some were more convex, so I had to fill them in or not fill them as thickly. I wanted to create as smooth a surface as I possibly could on the walls. Uh, you can see I used a couple different trowels um, to get this all filled in, um, and I wasn't too worried about getting it absolutely smooth. Uh, you can see from me wearing a mosquito net and the mosquito uh, candles that it was a 
high mosquito season here in Wisconsin and quite a bit of work. I got bit quite a lot. After the first coat, I covered it again with plaster so that it would dry more slowly and I would spray it every once in a while with water just to keep it damp uh, and so it would dry smoothly. And then I did the second coat, uh, which consisted of similarly one part lime, three to four parts sand, and one part horse hair, uh, but with no water, just, just that. Uh, and I did a second coat. After the second coat was done, I moved on to making the yakasugi, which is a uh, wood fire treatment. Basically, uh, wood rots because microorganisms eat, eat the nutrients in the wood. Well, if you carbonize the wood, that is, burn it, uh, there's no nutrients left for the microorganisms to eat, so when the wood gets wet, it doesn't rot. This is a traditional Japanese way of or making treated lumber, or the equivalent of treated lumber for wet applications. The traditional way is to make a triangle, like I'm doing here, and then light a fire in the middle. I found I couldn't control that, and actually the best way for me was lighting a, just a small campfire, and then running boards over it, um, and then I could turn the boards over, look and see how much they had burned, and move them down. And really, I thought this was burning the boards quite a lot, but when I cut through them, I saw it really just burned the top sixteenth to eighth of an inch. Once they were all burned, uh, what I was able to do then was use a stiff wire brush and brush off the uh, bigger chunks of carbon, leaving a more brushed and even appearance. Then to attach them, I, I simply cut them and apply them like siding on a house. The original wood was cedar, so it was already somewhat weather resistant. I put the more carbonized ones near the bottom and the le less carbonized ones near the top. Eventually these would get a coat of linseed oil, as will all of the wood. Uh, exposed on the outside. That linseed oil will help preserve and keep uh, water and moisture from penetrating into the wood. To make the final coat, I mix one part lime to one and a half parts fine sand. And this is going to be the top smooth coat of plaster. It took a little longer to mix, but eventually came out pretty nice. Sometimes after applying uh, a layer of plaster there would be cracks and I would just work the next layer of plaster into those cracks as long as the plaster felt like it was well attached to what, the layer behind it. And to finish it off I made whitewash which is not just watered down paint it's actually one part lime putty to eight parts water and it forms like a milk like consistency and when you put it on you can't really see it but as it hardens or as it dries it starts to become bright white and eventually in the sunlight this thing actually shines because of the crystalline structure of the whitewash it's really amazing and here you can see it with the linseed oil and the whitewash in the sun it's pretty stunning and here's the picture of the final coupe all done we've got a couple glamour shots here and then on the inside uh, as the winter approached I closed up these vents by putting straw in them and then dropping down these flaps and that keeps wind from blowing through. The chickens still have plenty of ventilation um, in the eaves under the rafters but this closes down the big vents that would have let big cold gusts take all their heat away. And this is the basic chicken compound. You can see the, the run in the background, uh, our shed, and then the coop. I also added some mirrors to the front to help with the solar gain. The front, the south side, is all windows to help get lots of heat inside and keep the coop a little warmer. And here's a shot with the first snow. So it was a fun project, it was a long project, but really enjoyable. Thanks for watching. Please check out our website and our YouTube channel. Subscribe if you liked it. Feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching.